Hello and welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigeria's leading initiative in the business of brand management and management of brand business. It is a 30 minutes wholesome package that comprises brand news, brand in focus and industry conversation, all in a mix encompassing thorough and in-depth all aimed at promoting the brand idea. I'm Ogali Abikele Mafuru. Keep up with innovative, revealing, and groundbreaking happenings in the world of brands and brand builders in Nigeria and across the globe. Mingle with people and brands that make the cut and the personalities that keep reinventing the trends and traditions in the marketing world. All an exciting one-stop shop for marketing vibes. Marketing Edge on TV. You are always right on time with the right people and movers and shakers of the world of marketing as they share their views and ideas on the business and challenges of advertising, corporate affairs, media strategy, and the unfolding exciting world of digital marketing. Join the trendsetters and key decision makers as they shape opinions and project into the future of the marketing landscape for 30 exhilarating minutes on this channel. Stay ahead, be thrilled to beat, be marketing savvy with Marketing Edge on TV. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. Good to have you back. First on Marketing Edge on TV is brand news where we bring you the latest developments around brands and in the field of advertising, marketing and communication in Nigeria and around the world. Now on brand news. Against the backdrop of the recent efforts made to provide a reliable and effective data measurement tool in the integrated marketing industry, commercial director of TVC Communications, Redmond Rona, says the growth of the Nigerian market is being stifled by the dearth of data. Speaking to Marketing Edge, Redmond explained that data is vital and it is a huge catalyst to advertising investment as it helps to boost the confidence of investors. While noting that advertising investment all around the world is underwritten by research, he stated that there is not enough research in the Nigerian market that is void of errors and assumptions. The TVC boss expressed optimism that with qualitative research, that gives accurate data and consumer insights and market realities, Nigeria IMC industry will witness a rise in advertising investment. For people like ourselves, TBC Communications, one of the largest broadcasting companies in Nigeria, we need more investment into the advertising space because after all, it's advertising that we rely on to fund our company, 600 people, two channels, radio stations. So we welcome it and anything we can do to collaborate and support, we will do it. Leading quick service restaurant operator and lead franchisee for Domino's Pizza, Goldstone Creamery and Pigberry Gourmet Yogurt in Africa, Eat and Go Limited, has announced plans to expand its retail outlet this year beyond Nigeria, in line with its vision to go pan-African. The chief executive officer of Eat & Go, Patrick Mike Michael, who made this known in an exclusive interview with Marketing Edge on TV, stated that the company would finish this year with over 210 stores in Nigeria and other parts of Africa. While attributing its continued growth in the QSR category to the company's resilience and effective internal organization, the QSR boss assured its team and consumers that the company is committed to make innovation and excellent service delivery the focus of its operational mandate. According to him, customers are at the core of its decision-making and its services evolves around customer satisfaction. We want every... Um Nigerian to be able to order Domino's Pizza. So we'll continue our expansion both here in Lagos and then across the country. We'll be in new cities and new states across Nigeria. Um, we're always um, looking for, for new sites and we have a whole pipeline of new stores that are under construction now at this moment of time. So a really exciting time for Nigeria with the investment that we're putting into the, into the economy. Um, you know, the ripple effect of our investment across the economy is more jobs, more suppliers supplying our companies. Company, and, that, and that's in all towns all across Nigeria. Many of our suppliers are localized in, in the towns 
um, where, where we are opening these new shops. So, you know, we're really putting our money where our mouth is. We have a strong belief in Nigeria and, and expanding all the way across this country. As inflationary pressures continues to rise, consumers have expressed concerns over the reduction in package sizes and quantity in product offerings of some popular fast-moving consumer goods FMCG brands. According to the consumers who spoke to Marketing Edge, the content of products has been drastically reduced and prices hiked to more than 15%. Companies are reportedly turning to the old strategy of shrinkflation a marketing tactic where consumers are keenly focused on the price of goods and less aware of the small changes to the size of volume or quantity of products. When cost of production increases, companies tend to cut costs either by reducing quantity or quality of a product while maintaining the price or maintaining the quality and quantity and inflating the price. Now, Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, Lagos State Chapter, is set to collaborate with the Nigerian Police Force to tackle insecurity, which has become a huge challenge in the country. This was revealed at the just-concluded PR Clinic monthly meeting, which was held at the Echo FM Motor Purpose Hall at GDP Ikeja, Lagos. The theme of the event was Stakeholder Relationship Imperative for National Security. Speaking on the relationship between members of the public and police officers, Abiodu Alabi, Commissioner of Police Lagos State Command, called for synergy to tackle insecurity in the country. On her part, Comfort Onwankwo, the chairman of Lagos NIPR, pledged on revering determination to assist the police force to eradicate the upsurge of insecurity as the security of any nation is a responsibility of all. The West African Research Center, WARC, has revealed in its latest report that deep tech companies are ranked among the biggest advertisers in the world with an ad spend of $46.6 .6 billion in 2021, accounting for 6% of all ad investment globally. According to the International Marketing Intelligence Service, the report underlines the importance of deep tech to the health of global ad economy setting the eight big tech platforms, namely Alibaba, Alphabet, Amazon, Badu, Meta, Microsoft, Netflix, and Tencent on course to account for 10% of all worldwide ad investment by 2030. The report added that big tech spend on advertising is also growing than categories such as media, publishing, technology, and electronics, and retail. Well, that was brand news. Nest is branding focus after this break. Hey, my people, my people. Free 20,000 Naira products. 20,000 Naira. Split your NIN with your glow line and you will receive 20,000 Naira products. Oh. How do we get NIN to a glow line? It's simple, sir. Just call 109 or die, sir. about those of us who do not have NIN. You can walk into any grow room and register. <laughs> How do I partake of this 20,000? <laughs> if you are a new or old glow customer, get your bonus while it lasts. I have received my 20,000 naira bonus. <laughs> Oh, I see this collab with the suit there. <laughs> Blue scatter. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, give me small new number now. Uh, romance without finance now, annoyance. Better give me bullet. Uh, yeah, give me the number. Oh, yeah, draw the number down. 005. Uh -huh. huh. Where the complete number? This one where so hot, like the blessed are going need juice, so just like juices. Hey, oh, yeah, give me last numbers. My five password. Four one, are you owe me? <laughs> oh, yeah, seven six five zero. Uh -huh. uh. What's you? What's you? It's my knee, hello, all right? Ooh, what's you? What's up, gang? Guys, your first collab was on the train, though. Give me that. Find your first. 
Choose a social data bundle that suits your style. Dial star 777 hash glow unlimited. Marketing Edge on TV. Promoting the bright idea. Now on branding focus. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic no doubt has caused a noticeable and irreversible shift in every facet of life, including the behavior of consumers. Economics and industries have been greatly affected. One of the areas that the shift of the new bulk has become more noticeable is the quick service restaurant QSR. It altered the face of the fast food industry tremendously, encouraging it to innovate and develop superior service models that are customer-centric and resilient enough to navigate future disruptions. On the other hand, the pandemic also accelerated the adoption of digital technology as businesses and individuals saw firsthand its tremendous potential for adopting and adapting to new operating models and capabilities that make their business move more competitive. Today's consumer wants quick service delivery with convenience. With the new normal, consumers now prefer digital interactions such as the use of digital payment methods instead of cash. This new change in consumer behavior is therefore encouraging brands and marketers to navigate at a faster pace for innovative processes that will enable them to align with current demands while also preparing for the demands of tomorrow. While the operators in QSR are fighting hard to stay afloat in an unstable economy through various marketing campaigns, trend their facilities, better management and maintenance culture, they have further moved the dial by exploring more innovative ways of selling takeaways as well as encouraging their clients to buy online through various channels. QSR businesses have significantly transformed into a digitally driven business and automated therefore enabling them to change their strategies by redefining delivery processes and delivery time for the ease of consumers. Consumers' demand today is driving sales efforts for the operators who are also driving consumer satisfaction through the same innovation. As a result of this, many food giants in the QSR segment have expanded their drive through increased number of workers, digitalized transformation, and streamlined menus. A critical case in point is the leading QSR giant operator and franchisee for Domino's Pizza, Goldstone Creamery, and Big Berry Yogurt in Africa, Eat and Go Limited, which recently broke a record when it officially flagged off the delivery of pizzas in 20 minutes nationwide in commitment to the vision to offer quality and timely services to its teen consumers. According to the food giant, the race is inside the store, it is not on the road, while the focus remains on driving customer satisfaction via excellent service. The brand has come to understand the importance of the new generation of on-demand delivery services and dispatch riders in the world of delivering packages across all its outlets. Well, that was branding focus, next is industry conversation, well, we have interactions with distinguished personalities who have made great impact in the business of brand management and management of brand business. Well, this week we will be speaking with the CEO of Publicities Group Redefining Nigeria, Dr. Tayo Oyedeji, after this break. Hey, my people, my people, free 20,000 direct products. 20,000 direct products. Click your MAN with your glow light. Those of us who do not have NIN, you can walk into any grow room and register. How do I partake of this 20,000? <laughs> if you are a new or old glow customer, get your bonus while it lasts. I have received my 20,000 naira bonus. <laughs> Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea.
Hello and welcome to Industry Conversation, a segment on Marketing Edge on TV where we have interactions with men and women who have done tremendously well in the business of brand management. Well, today we have with us the CEO of Publicist Group Redefini Nigeria, Tayo Oyereji. So pleased to have you with us on Industry Conversation. Thanks so much for having me. And such a pleasure to have you. You know, you're a very busy person and having to bring you on board feels very great. You're welcome again, sir. Thank you. I'm excited so, to be here. Yeah, I must say congratulations formally to you on your recent appointment as a CEO of, you know, a publicist group Redefini Nigeria. It's, it's a very good one and well-deserving for you. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what would be your assessment of the advertising industry in the outgoing year? Um, I think the industry has grown, um, but the key thing we need to focus on is on building capacity and helping our people to be better at the things we do. Um, so I used to be CEO of, um, of Starcom in South Africa, for instance. And the one key thing that's the difference between Nigeria and South Africa is that a lot of the professionals in South Africa actually went to school to study different aspects of advertising. While on this, in this part of the world, a lot of our people are self-taught. And that's not bad in itself, but I think we need to layer some specialized formal knowledge on the, on the self-taught aspects of the things we do in our, in our nation. Okay, you just hammed on the fact that you also have experiences outside this country. How would you rate Nigeria against other countries of the world in terms of innovation and creativity? I think by far we're, the, we're probably the most strategic market I've worked in and the most creative. Um, the only place where we struggle a little bit is in implementation. So on the strategic and thought process, we're, we're, we're really great. We're comparable to the best in the world. On the, on the creativity, we're amazing. But sometimes our production lags behind our creativity because, of, um, because once again, a lot of us are self-taught rather than, than, than um, formally education, educated in our field. How would you evaluate the shift to digital and the impact that had on the industry? Yeah, um, a few years ago, we used to say that digital is the future of advertising. Um, but no more, it's the current, it's our current reality. It's people wake up in the morning and their first screen is their cell phone. Um, people literally consume media on, on digital screens, on their cell phones, on their computers. And so we as professionals, we have to think digital first. The first thing we did as Insight and across all the other companies in our group was to institute a model that we no longer think traditional, traditional in our mindset or the things we do for clients. We think digital first and then leverage on traditional because for people, digital is number one um, right now. So one thing that has also been brought to the fore is um, influencer marketing. I've seen a lot of, um, you know, talents on the various digital platforms. So how can agencies tap into this evolving channel to their own advantage, of course, to meet with their target audience? Yeah. So um, at Insights, we've got a really strong model, which is the Insights Influencer Model for reaching, um, for, for, for making sense of the influencer markets, right? Because there are a million people that could be your influencers from you know, David Doe all the way to um, Pramilary or wherever it is that you're thinking about. But the truth is you need to audit and be sure that the people match your brand because it's all about your brand. It's not really about you or what you like. Um, we tell brand managers that you're not the target market necessarily. The target market exists outside of you. And so what we have to do is to do the things that the target market is passionate about, the things that the target market wants, and so using similar metrics, we need to understand the influencers that really influence the target market better than the influencers that influence you as a person. Okay. Um, the outgoing year was more like a recovery from the pandemic year. What would you identify as a major shift in that year? Yeah. I think we, we all never knew we could work from home, <laughs> almost 100%. Mm -hmm. And so to me, the big shift is the thinking towards we need to be more of a hybrid workplace, a place where work can go, get done on site, but work can also get done at home. And so all organizations globally are struggling with how do we fuse these two worlds together. Um, and, and the people that get it right will be the people that will be successful at the things we do. Okay. So how would you evaluate the responses of agencies to the pandemic? 
Um, I, think, I think we did really well as a group. Um, we quickly understood that people are now a lot more mobile than they a lot less mobile than they used to be. And so digital was going to be important. And I think we adapted well to that. But most importantly, we got to understand that people were a lot more concerned about mortality, the thought of death, the thought of a pandemic, and what it means for them. And so we, 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 began, we began to fuse ourselves into the meanings that they were making for themselves. And I think that's what we need to continue doing, understanding how people think about the world, how they think about themselves, how they think about brands, and just becoming a part of that conversation is, 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 um, is the way the future will work well for agencies in general. Okay. Now, with your recent appointment as the CEO of Publicis Group of FME Nigeria, how do you feel being saddled with this new responsibility? I mean, it's huge. We've got, we've got seven agency brands. So Insight Publicis is our number one creative agency, and it's by far the most iconic creative agency in Nigeria. We've got Leo Bonnet, which, is, which has an American heritage and is a, it's all about people, understanding humankind. We've got Star, Starcom Media Perspectives, which is our first um, media agency. We've got Zenith All Seasons, our second um, media agency. We've got Quadrant MSL. Mm -hmm. Our PR agency, early this year, we started our first standalone digital agency, which is Digitas. Again, speaking to the things we've been talking about, the world is going digital. And so we must be able to give our clients a standalone digital offering. Mm -hmm. And so as a group, I mean, I think we work with some of the best professionals in Nigeria almost 300 people focused on just delivering value to clients in many aspects of, um, of our industry. Well, you've had um, decades of experience working in integrated marketing communication space. How has your previous experiences there, or how does it bear on your new role? Yeah. I think the, the key thing I've taken from my years of experience in our field is that it's a people's business. Everything else is secondary. It's about, uh, the saying I like is, I, I like saying that the people with the best people win in every single aspect of our industry. And so my job is to make sure that our people love working at um, our businesses, that we're able to use the immense creativity of our people to service our clients, that we're able to get technology and data involved because Advertising is no longer about gut feel and how I think about it. It's about understanding the consumers from a deep place so that we can profile solutions that, that meet the needs of our, of our consumers in, in multiple ways. So. Okay, talking about meeting your consumers in multiple ways, how would you project advertising spend for this year? I think it's going to go up um, primarily because people are, are coming out of their shell a lot more. People are traveling more. People are, experienced, are, are looking for new experiences. If you look at um, December in Nigeria, for instance, it was one of the largest dirty December ever. Um, Pepsi, one of our clients, had a huge December celebration across multiple, with multiple um, artists, David Doe, Whiskey, just a bunch of, and every single time it was packed full because people have been locked up for quite a while and now they're coming out to say, let's have fun, let's enjoy our lives. And in people coming out and being more extro extrovert extroverted and being willing to spend more, it means that the brand that communicates is going to get a significant portion of that budget. So we need to help our clients communicate effectively so that they can win. So what do you think will drive advertising spend you know, this year? This year, um, I think the, the largest source of spend is going to be, again, technology, um, primarily because... Um, Technology has the potential to scale anything and everything, right? And so we're beginning to see scale even in, in Nigerian finance. So fintech mm -hmm. is a huge part of what we do. We're seeing some health tech startups that are also growing significantly. We're seeing some marketing tech firms. And I, I just think that the role of tech in scaling every single part of what we do has been underreported, right? So I think. Um, Technology is going to be the key driver of advertising in, in Nigeria. Okay, year. we um, understand that the advertising industry has been going through some new uh, reforms to, to checkmate some unethical practices. Yeah. What would be your opinion about the recent reform, the advertising industry standard of practice, being pushed forward by APCON? 
I like it. I absolutely love it. I think um, where there's no barrier to entry in any field, then abuse is inevitable. Imagine if anybody could wake up tomorrow and start a hospital. Then we'll just have a bunch of quack doctors. doctors. Yeah. If anybody could wake up and say, I'm a bank, they would just have a bunch of fraud going on across the nation. And so similarly, um, our industry needs to have some standards. We need to have um, certain things that regulate the things we do and the way we think about clients and our business. And so I think it's a welcome development. It's going to improve the things we do as a business. Okay, can you give us more info on what your company will be doing this year in terms of you know, improving on your strategic positioning? Um, this year is going to be our best year in a, in, a, in a long time as a business because this year we're focused more on helping our clients do better, right? So a lot of our clients from Nigerian bureaus to, to Pepsi to um, FCMB to Visa, all we're just focused on this year is how can we help you capture a better share of your market, right? And so we feel that if we're able to do that, then that's where the value that we bring to the table comes. So for the new clients and even the existing clients, we're just 100% focused on helping them win in their space. Um, so that's, that's the key thing for us this year. Okay, so now let's get a bit personal. Let's get to know you more closely. Who is Tayo Oedeji? Um, Tayo Oedeji is, um, is Tayo Oedeji. <laughs> Um, I, I, I mean, okay, so I'm not going to talk professional, I'll talk personal. I'm from a wonderful little town called Obomosho, which is kind of the most beautiful slice of heaven mm. nestled in your state. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm very connected to my roots in that sense. Um, but I've, I've lived in, in America for quite a bit, almost 16 years. Um, I lived in England and worked in England for a little bit too. Um, I think for me, but since I came back to Africa, it's been, it's been, it's been a huge part of who I am. I love this continent. I've, I've worked in about 10 countries in Africa and in each one of them, it's just made me fall in love more and more with Africa. So coming back from America for me was a no brainer. It was all about coming back to provide value to our continent and just to help us improve the things we do. Um, so if you could say one thing that is most important to me it is just helping people be better in any form or shape. Right, so that's, yeah. I don't know if that's, <laughs> but that's who I am. Yeah, so pleased to meet you. Thank you so more much. Personally. So thank you for being part of our program industry conversation. I hope to have future conversations with you on the program. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, the pleasure is all mine. So it has been an exciting time having this conversation. Do well to join us again same time next week for another interesting time. I'm Ogali Abi Telemakwe. Bye for now. It's been three decades of statehood in Yobe State, coupled with steady growth and development in all areas. A decade-long Boko Haram insurgency has also hampered the steady rise to greatness in the pride of the Sahel. But it's time for continuity, consolidation and innovation in Yobe State. Watch as Governor May Malabuni builds on progress made by past administrations and breaks new grounds with fresh projects and programs on Impact Yobe. Impact your bay on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. and Thursdays 12.30 p.m. on TVC News. Join us. News, wherever the big news story is happening.